Hey there, let's talk about the first four steps of designing scenarios. Hi there, my name is Paul Frampas. I'm the director of the Winter Institute for Simulation, Education, and Research at the University of Pittsburgh. Many of you probably know us as Wiser. Today I want to talk about the first four steps of scenario design. How can you make your scenario design process move like a machine so you can create more scenarios for your simulation program? Having a step-by-step -step method is the best way to take the first step in that direction. So I think that there's four core steps that have to be done in order and then after that you can kind of branch out and be a little bit variable in your approach to scenario design. So let's start. Step one. Step one is to pick the topic. This seems commonsensical, but it may or may not be. Generally, when we talk about the topic, we talk about a broad range of things, but let's be a little bit specific here and, and figure out, are we talking about teaching medical content or healthcare content where people are going to be making critical decisions and, and ordering medications and therapy and those kinds of things? Or is our primary focus going to be on team training, teamwork, communications, team leadership, I don't know, you get to pick it, but pick your topic. Then we go to step two. Step two, define the learner and learners, okay? This is really, really important because yes, we're going to get on to the next step, which is designing learning objectives, but to be able to do that, we have to understand our learner population. Who is this scenario targeted to? Is it junior learners? Is it senior learners? Is it one, more than one, a whole team, multiple teams? Are they all from the same background, different backgrounds, or what domains of healthcare are they coming from? This is really important. I'm gonna bring it back down to a single domain example. If you take the example of a fourth year medical student, what do you expect of them in terms of being able to evaluate a patient that's complaining of chest pain? Think about that and contrast it to if you are dealing with a medical student that is at the second year of medical school and hasn't had clinical experience. We could take the same topic, but applied to those two different populations, our expectations and what we're going to be evaluating and what we're going to be expecting from them is different. So step two, define the learner or learners. Step three. Step three is setting the learning objectives. This is where you want to go into great detail, great painstaking detail about what you're trying to accomplish with this simulation scenario. It's very important. A lot of people like to skip right over it because quite frankly, it's no fun. Well, it's a little fun for us education geeks, but realistically, we want to carefully define. Take a topic, any topic, let's say asthma in the emergency department. You'll have to pardon me, I'm an emergency physician, so many of my examples come back to the emergency department. But you can work with me and translate it to your clinical environment. When you think about asthma in the emergency department, it could be lots of different things. It could be a minor asthma attack, could be a first ever asthma attack, could be management of chronic, could be major, could be life-threatening, everything in between. What do we want this learner group that we have defined in step two to do with this topic of asthma. So we're taking the big topic of asthma and we're really, 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 really coning it down to saying with this topic and these learners in this scenario, this is what we're going to accomplish at this level of detail. It's really, really important to get down to the level of detail because when you think about it, we can't just transcend what's supposed to happen in the real clinical environment into the simulation environment. That doesn't always work. Sometimes we wanna change the foci a bit. Sometimes maybe we wanna focus on the step-by-step -step history presentation or the physical exam, or maybe we want to see treatment, or maybe we want to see the overall management or the critical thinking that goes on for managing asthma in the emergency department. So be very specific with your learning objectives. And step four. Step four is define your assessment plan. Define your assessment objectives. What are you going to be watching for when you, the creator of this simulation scenario, are watching the participants do their thing? 
What are you watching for? What are you picking up on that you're going to bring into the debriefing? What are you picking up on that you might be filling out assessment tools for or so on? So I'm saying define your assessment plan with specificity of what you're looking for. This is different than designing the assessment tool that could come later and perhaps maybe not at all. But you need to remember every simulation is an assessment of sorts. Okay, doesn't mean that it needs an assessment tool and checklists and rating scales and everything else. It just simply means the focus of the faculty member or the teacher or the instructor, whatever you want to call them, that are observing this simulation, that are going to help this student or group of students get better. They need to be focused on certain things. And what we want to try to get out of this from an assessment plan needs to match our objectives. And our objectives were predicated on the expectation for the level and types of learners that we were having for the given topic we were going to achieve. After that, scenario design goes in many, many different ways uh, with lots of different steps and other kinds of things that you can think about that are important for your scenario design. But in review, the first four steps in order should be one, pick a topic, two, define your learners, three, specific learning objectives, comb that topic down to what you want this group of learners to specifically focus on, and then the assessment plan. What do I want to assess? How am I going to ensure that these learning objectives have been accomplished with this group of students? So that's the four in review. What I want to point out to you is notice something missing. The story. The story comes later. Everybody wants to focus on the story because the story is fun. It's what we do clinically. It's replicating things that are fun to do and bring in the theatrics of simulation. But really what we want to do is bring the theatrics of simulation in so that they cause some activity, so that we can assess, so that we can accomplish objectives for a given, given groups of students around a given topic. That's the first four steps of scenario design. Until next time, happy simulating.